Hello, everyone. Uh, our next speaker is Gail Forget, and uh, he's from MIT, and he will talk about bridging ocean climate and ecosystem models modeling, or bringing it to Julia. Hi, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Gail, and um, I work at MIT in the, uh, um, in the Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Science Department, and today I'm going to tell you about um, a Julia package, uh, my very first, in fact, um, that um, provides a uniform representation of um, ways of gridding the Earth, which I'll call global grids. Um, in Julia, and so these grids are uh, particularly popular in in, uh, in my communities, and they are important because they allow us to understand how stuff moves around the Earth, uh, in the atmosphere or in the ocean. Um, in this example, these are every little um, trajectory here. Line uh, is a simulated displacement of a piece of plastic that you would put in the ocean uh, over a year, and so. Um, doing this sort of things typically involve two different languages, um, a common issue, I suppose. And so one is running a what's called a general circulation model, um, and that's a heavy computation. The second, uh, is, uh, the second part of the work, the typical workflow is to an, uh, visualize and analyze uh, the output uh, we're using a different language. Um, and so, of course, one of the exciting things about Julia is that uh, we can hope to do both of those things. Uh, in the same environment um, in the near future. Uh, today, I'm going to mostly be concerned with this uh, part here, which is a lower hanging fruit uh, in a sense, but also is of interest to a wide community uh, by itself. Uh, with this being said, what I'm going to be describing is a representation of global grids in Julia, which uh, is a, um, an essential building block for both of those aspects. Um, the general circulation models, and the analysis. So what do I mean by global grids? I'm going to show you maybe the most three types of grids that are most commonly used in our system modeling. Um, this first one is the simplest. Um, you can think of it as just a one big array being wrapped around uh, a globe. And so it's represented here with uh, four different colors that you can think of as faces. Uh, each one of them would be an array, but really this is also just one big array. Um, so you may wonder why go any further. This is, looks simple enough. Uh, well, if you notice at the North Pole, there is a pretty um, uh, massive convergence of grid lines, which from a numerical standpoint is basically horrible. So people have started doing things that are slightly more involved. Um, and so this is an example of something that's called a cube sphere. Uh, where you take a sphere and you project it uh, in a conformal way on a uh, cube. Uh, so that is something that typically you think of having six faces. Um, and that is something that's very popular in the atmospheric community specifically. Uh, in the ocean community, um, in the oceanographic community, we like also something like this, uh, which uh, is the so-called LLC grid. Um, so this is something now that has five faces. Uh, that are all visible on this. Um, and, um, and so we have three very kind of different type of objects. So one of the goals here is to make uh, something uniform that user can leverage to easily manipulate output on those three type of grids. Um, and I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Before I move on, I'd like to stress that one of the essential aspects to this is to represent the connection between the different faces. Typically, you know, stuff doesn't stop here. So we want ways to communicate between um, the different regions here. Uh, but let's start with just the, how do you represent those things uh, in um, how I went about to implement uh, representation for those things in Julia. And so uh, this is the main purpose of this uh, package that I created, which is called gcmfaces.gl. GCM here stands for General Circulation Model. Um, and so this is that five-phase grid that I was describing. If you take that concept and lay it out on a plane, on a piece of paper, you may do it like that, where you have your five different faces, which 
I see five different arrays, um, different sizes and different orientations. Um, and so what I did in Julia is simply port that type of representation into a, a custom array format. And so this is what's shown here. And so this is the results of the uh, show method that I've overloaded for that in, um, uh, for my, my data type. Um, and so this method, um, so basically it gives a, the grid type, which in this case is this LLC type, a data type for the individual elements on each of the faces, which in this case is for 64, um, and the number of faces and the size of each face. Um, and so the goal though is to have something that's very simple to use. And so from a user standpoint, uh, what it comes down to is you know, loading um, the module from the, uh, this package. That's the first line of code here. The second line is actually loading a set of specifications for a predefined grid, uh, which is my LLC grid. And the third line is uh, something that takes a file, a binary file in this case, and just reads uh, this content to memory, converts that into an instance of the GCM basis type. And so this is one of the grid. I mentioned that the goal was to have a uniform treatment of, of various type of ways of gridding the earth. And so this is my other example today. Um, this is the cube sphere again, so six faces, right? And so this is the code that uh, comes from my little Julia notebook, uh, sorry, Jupyter notebook. Um, and so the code is exactly the same thing. The only difference, uh, although you may not see it very well, is that uh, here the grid type in our CS uh, for cube sphere, and there's six faces, and they're all 32 by 32 array. Um, so this is the first concept. Now the other uh, important element that I've mentioned before is this way of communicating information between the faces. And so this is what is done by this uh, so-called exchange function. And so the exchange function is something that takes a Julia instance, uh, sorry, a GCM faces uh, instance as the first argument, takes a number of points as a second argument, and returns a new um, GCM faces instance, which has added lines and columns at the edges, basically. And so now the sizes of the faces are 40 by 40 instead of 32 by 32. And just to visualize this, um, I leveraged the plots package. And so you basically go from, this is for one of the faces, the one that is at the South Pole. So this big black mass here represents Antarctica, in fact. Uh, these colors are the ocean bottom depth. And so for that face, which was 32 by 32, um, we end up with this after the exchange function has been called with uh, an added four lines, uh, rows, and columns uh, at the edges. And so while this may seem fairly benign, uh, this actually opens a lot of possibilities. And this is a way to implement the communication and the passage of stuff across the edges. And so once you have something like that, for example, you can start computing you know, derivatives right at the edges and say integrating, a, a, um, um, like solving for a, a Poisson equation or something like this. Um, Fairly straight in a fairly straightforward manner uh, on the globe. And so what's next? Well, so this first implementation um, is a bit of a proof of concept and was also my very first venture in Julia. Uh, so I still have some work to do uh, to make it into a proper Julia package. Uh, I've put it online and if anybody has feedback, that would be uh, awesome. Um, but I still need to put some tests in place and some documentations, et cetera. I have not worried too much about the um, um, uh, compliance with the, the later versions of Julia yet. And performance also I, uh, is something that I am going to look at next. Um, and then the rest here is, you know, I have originally had implemented something like this uh, to facilitate the use of our results in MATLAB. Uh, so I have more features there that I want to port. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I, the, fun, the fun really begins when you start interfacing this sort of things with Julia packages. I'm thinking, for example, MPI libraries. Um, and um, also, I'd like to start try and interface this at some point in the future with the Fortran code that is in the MIT GCM, which is the MIT General Circulation Model. And um, on this note, I'll thank you for your attention, and I'll welcome any questions. Thank you.
thank you. Well, we have time for one quick question. Does anyone have a question? Just really quick question. Do you know if anyone, oh, oh. Uh, do you know if anyone is working on doing sort of the GCM modeling in Julia? Um, that's the kind of things we're talking about on some level, but I don't know of anyone doing it yet, no. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.